75 laps of figure eight action coming up. The race has been controlled uh, historically by the Tunney family. Everybody wants to get going. We're going to go over the rules just so there's no confusion, so everybody understands. We are running three hour rules, so therefore you can pit under a red flag. I'm Tim Logue, the driver of the 99 USA Insulation uh, Outlaw Figure 8 car. My day job is an executive at USA Insulation. It's my second year of racing in this class, yeah. I got uh, sixth overall last year in points, yeah. I'm an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> it's just that simple. I mean, uh, you know, I like to bungee jump, I've skydived, I've tried about everything. I work really hard and I play really hard as well. Figure eight racing is, uh, is something I did once, twice when I was younger. Never had the money to fully campaign a car and now that I can afford to do it, it's something I wanted to do. And I thought I'd do it for one year and I'd be out. I got to prove my point that I could do it. And uh, I think it just pissed me off that I ran with the best of the best and they made me look like a fool half the year. I mean, I couldn't keep up with them. I couldn't do anything. And it was a very expensive learning experience last year. This year, I've been trying to pace myself. And so I'd like to get at least one victory this year. And the entire pit area is part of the racing surface. So please be on the lookout. Have your crews on the lookout. We're making sure nobody gets hurt in the pits tonight. Race until you see the checkered flag. If you want to see somebody put a car someplace where you don't think a car could go, you need to come to the speed drum and watch Ben Tunney. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, that's who my competition is. My name is Ben Tunney. I drive the number five outlaw figure eight slash late model at the Indianapolis Speed Dome and various tracks throughout the country. Well, I've raced against their uh, fathers uh, back in the day. And uh, uh, two brothers, uh, they're both younger brothers to me. Uh, Jesse is the middle one and Austin is the youngest and uh, we all three began racing as soon as we were able. Hard working kids, they work really hard. They work hard on their cars, they tune them, they know everything there is to know on this track. They've grown up here, uh, probably have some of the highest lap counts of drivers that have ever raced at this track. So you know, they're definitely the hardest competition to beat uh, on any given Saturday. Uh, since I was 16, uh, I started as a rookie and I've been doing it every year since. Like for me, and. Uh, my brother and Mark started. We hadn't raced really anything um, before we started racing these figure eight cars, so we jumped straight into them. Uh, this year we started off with a fairly good streak. We, we had won uh, five races. Saturday night we lost and got second to my brother Austin, and uh, I guess you can't win them all, so we'll just have to go on and see when the next streak starts, and hopefully it's not too long of a losing one. I've been at the Speed Room since I was born. I'm Michael Hadley. I started racing when I was four. I mean, I had 20 some years of, of racing experience before I got into the figure eights, and, and there's nothing quite like uh, another car coming at you, coming out of a corner. He's been racing since he was a child. 
you know, and has had the privilege to get to race a lot, and, and he's really a good driver. The one thing about figure eight racing, there's so much that goes on. You're worried about you and your car running the perfect line, you know, hitting your mark, while you're also dealing with traffic, trying to pass cars, while you're also dealing with not getting hit in the crossover, you know, coming out of a corner, do I need to go, do I need a checkup, uh, do I need to swing out wide, do I need to cut inside? There's nothing really like it. There's, there's nothing that you have to deal with that many things. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, I'm looking at that's who my competition is. It's <laughs> it's the Tunnies. And I mean, I happen to be with one, and I still don't want them to win. Uh, my old lady, her name is Katie Tunney. Uh, she's. For the record, I hate being called old lady. All right. I've known her for a long time, actually. Yeah, I mean, we were 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there. That's when. The last that I, I really remember, you know, who meeting her around that time. Uh, back then, I was super scared of her dad. <laughs> a lot of people still are. He won the three hour last year, which, you know, hats off to him. That's the, the hardest race in the world to win, as far as I'm concerned. But to race a race that's 430 laps, that's 860 times through that crossover against starting you know, uh, 28 competitors in the field of another 20 cars sitting there to come on um, and to be able to win that race. Um, and my hat's off to him. I mean, what an amazing accomplishment and achievement. I mean, racing is, uh, it's, it's tight knit, you know, it's, you, you don't like a lot of people, but at the end of the day, a lot of people are family too and close. Passing under yellow, passing under red. I won't catch you always, but I will sure try. So if you get sent to the pits, please just go. You'll lose a lot less time if you just cooperate. Go, get back in line, and come around. I mean, already beware. I think did that 20 times last year. Mike, you did it a bunch. So I will try to catch you. <laughs> He's not always bad, but Riddle, Riddle races hard. I don't have a problem with any of them. Some of them have a problem with me. I don't go out there to make friends. I bring all my friends with me. They have a little, they have their drinks and, but they let me do what I want to do, so they can do that. I'm good with that. We've been here at the Speed Room for five years, last three years full time. Been racing overall like 21 years. Outlaw 8 model, figure 8 car. It, uh, we don't have the best equipment out there, but we've, we've got pretty good. Dad makes a lot of stuff. We uh, try to save dime everywhere we can so we can make it. I love racing here. So the main thing is to stay out of wrecks. Keep your nose clean. Cars are pretty competitive, all of them's fast. Uh, it's figure eight racing. If you don't like to rub, probably shouldn't be out there. Yeah, yeah pass as many cars as I can get and stay out of the wrecks. Riddle's fast and Riddle's showing up the race, and if you're buying, you better have your game face on. You're going to work the impact, Todd's going to work the jack, and Reddy's going to be the tower guard. That's fucked. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's attitude. $25,000, dollars race car with a bunch of 18-year-olds working on it. That's crazy, ain't it? This man's got house shoes on. <laughs> Clean race cars are fast race cars. I get along with most of them. To be honest, just coming straight from the heart, a couple of them, there's a couple of them out there that just like. Twenty-eight, we had the disagreement with Jeffrey Shackleford. 
He's definitely the kid that uh, has more confidence and believes in himself. Indianapolis speed drum racing. He's definitely the the one kid that you either love him or you love to hate him. You know, he's fighting for the rookie of the year and this year there's like four good competitors and running for that. He wants to win. It's just a big mind game really. There's some people that talk crap about other people but they don't want them to find out. It's kinda like a uh, it's kinda like a like a reality TV show like Jerry Springer type thing, but the sport always needs a little uh, a little conflict here and there, of course. Good luck, Chris. He's got a rowdy bunch. Uh, his old man Jeff and he knows it too. He's he's a crazy. He's he's rowdy. He got down across the No, you know, he definitely was already there. Jeffrey was at the bus. Let's look at the damage on the car. Let's see where the 28 gets into it. You either love him or you love to hate him, one of the two. So, uh, and you're probably going to have both of those emotions before the year's over. This year there's about four and, and they're all pretty decent. So it makes, it makes it fun to watch them learn, but tough to race with at the same time. It's just kind of been like a family battle, really. A three generation battle is the Tunnies. Like, my dad's a St. John, but I'm a Shackleford. I took my mom's last name, but I'm still pretty much a St. John and stuff. The Tunnies and the St. John's, they go like way back, like my Uncle Mike and my Uncle Kenny. They're, they're three or four generations deep, just like just like my family is. They used to have just craziness. Like, in this sport, the rivalries are throughout generations. It's welded to the side of the frame rail on the chassis. It's where the weld was uh, underneath was starting to crack, like a hairline thin crack. I figured it would be okay for the night because it wasn't real bad. And I ran another practice and I figured I'd check it out and see if it got worse. Make it happen, figure eight practice up now. Figure eight practice up next. for Mark Tunney and 17.57s for Austin Tunney. But Jeffrey Shockford's right there too, little Jeffrey, 17.6s. So keep in mind, we got some good speeds going out there. I felt pretty good. What was I running? Three, multiple. But it started to get worse and walk up around the bracket. I didn't really expect anyone to have a welder, but I asked around and paint cleaned off first. This is Austin. I'm gonna ask Austin what it's set up for. We don't have anything to practice on. Uh, grinding wheel from uh, Mike Riddle. Do I got it on backwards or anything? Should this be flipped? I didn't think it matters. And my brother Austin Tunney's team uh, loaned me the welder and some flashlights and a few helping hands. And, uh, my mom's husband Jay and my cousin Ryan are professional welders that work by trade, so they jumped in and couldn't wait to grind and weld on something. So that gave them something productive to do for once. They were happy. Hey, watch out, Jay. He's about to plug it in. And uh, we had to work on trying to clean the paint off so you could weld it. And I uh, still didn't really get it real good, but we got enough weld on there where I think it should hold good enough for tonight. We'll hopefully be fine for the next time. Yeah, the sharing thing is real popular. I mean, if you need a wrench or a spare of this or a spare of that, I loaned Mark a lowering block for his rear lease springs earlier. And the reason I had to loan him one is because he loaned one to someone else and that driver didn't come race tonight, so he couldn't get it back. So I loaned it to him. And uh, last uh, couple races to go, Mark loaned me a wheel. I had a bad wheel. I mean, 
drivers are always helping out to get on the track. And once you get on the track, it's like all that friendship stops, it seems like, so it gets a little different. Quentin is a great kid. He's young. He runs the number 14. His dad runs the number 41, Casey White. They have been racing out here for years. Been out here, there again, another kid racing big wheels and had raced in go-karts and he's raced in stock car series. He did very well in the stock car series. Kid's got a lot of patience. He's really good. He's running for a rookie run this year. He's like everybody else. You know, he, he has racing accidents, the same as we all do. He gets a little hot-headed. The kid's gonna be very good. He's gonna be definitely be somebody to watch. He is very quiet behind the wheel. He's very calm, he's methodical, and then he would just wait until that guy made a small mistake and he'd take advantage of it. He was always right there and ready. He has good equipment. He's definitely gonna be a kid to watch out for. Uh, I've been racing out here for almost 10 years. I just started in the late models this year. Big wheel racers, big wheel racers, big wheel racers, start making your way to your big wheel bikes. Big wheel racers, start making your way to your big wheels. Most of them started out in the big wheel races. They've started out in bicycle races. Yes, I'm coming. That was fun. That was the most exercise I got of the night. <laughs> you ready to go fast, Emma? You to pedal hard? One of the most dangerous times ever at the Indianapolis Speed Jump for track officials has been the big wheel race. Boom, 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 boom. I was surprised when she took off that by the time we got to the first turn, she was actually somewhere towards the front. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Go, Emma. Come on, Emma. Follow Daddy. Come on. And I was like, oh, well, she's trying to win. Okay, let's go. Follow Daddy. Come on. Come on, Emma. Come on. Come on. Chase Daddy. You just chase Daddy. Okay, Emma, this way. There you go. Good job. Good job. Another kid would come up beside him. She's just looking at the bike and staring. I'm like, hey, look at me. Look at me. It's like she wants to stop and turn. Uh, she wouldn't turn the wheel, she was stopping and get up and scoot the bike over and set it back down and steer. Good job. There you go. Good job, Emma. Let's go up there and pass it. Come on. Go. There you go. Just watch Daddy. Chase Daddy. Come on. Good job. Come on. Cross the line. Cross the line. Good job. Good job. Hey, come on. Where you going? She just wanted to keep going. I said, hey, we're done. Come back here. I don't want to chase you no more. I'm out of breath. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all having fun? Now you ready for some racing? I think so. Can y'all please now stand face the American flag flying proudly and have up gentlemen for playing up our national anthem. I always have to start in the back because they line us up by ranking. If uh, three guys have won a figure eight, they take the guy's second best finish. So if I have two wins and a second, they're going to take a guy that's got one win and a second and put him in front of me. And then the next guy, might, his best finish might be third. So he's going to be in front of us. So there's a lot of guys that don't have the, that's good at ranking. So they're all going to be in front of me. So every car that shows up, I'm behind. Yeah. I read on Facebook last week, yeah. there's a lot, like, a lot of people yeah. saying something like that. Yeah, above them, under them, over them, on any, underneath of them, whatever it goes. Whatever it takes to get the checker. Yeah, whatever works. Right on. Ben Tunney, congratulations. <laughs> Love me or you scream! Long. <laughs> Car looks good. It's fast. Mark's at a 17.5. All the fast cars will be trying to race to the front. Uh, makes for a good race, and a crossover should be crazy. Pass as many cars as I can get. Stay out of the wreck.
seat, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to go racing as the field takes a pace lap and gets ready to pull away. Set of five laps, set of five laps, on 150 times in the crossover. And hang on, folks, it's going to be a wild ride. Five laps, 75 laps of figure eight action coming up in a race that has been controlled uh, historically by the Tunney family. out there and it's a wild ride for the 99 of Poe. Little Jeff Rowe into the wall, Shackleford for a hard hit in the concrete, that's going to leave a mark. Riddle also out of the action in the 21 machine, hooked up against the bumper of the 99 of Lowe. That's going to make some ugly puppies down there. Crew checks in on Riddle, looks like stalled out. He was, he's a rookie, I'm a rookie. I should have went to the outside, I should have been a little more patient. And he shouldn't have drove up like he did, but this is the racing deal. I was pretty fired up about it. It was going to be a pretty big points night for us, because the more laps, the, the more points we get. So uh, we, did, we didn't get the make of one lap, so we knew we were going to be in trouble with the points still. Motion to get the best of me that race really. That was probably one of the roughest ones. 21 of Arthur also heading back in the pit area with damage done for the night. <laughs> back to green we go. Field punches up immediately dives into the corner. Having a number four trying to take control. The 3T of Mark Tunney still buried back in the pack working his way through. Yeah, that's uh, one of the wild things about a crossover. You've always got to you know, be cautious and aware of all your surroundings. We've all been involved in some sort of crossover altercation with, with somebody, so you know, and I mean, there could be five of them a night that you've got to avoid. Other nights, there could be zero. But it's something you kind of get used to as far as just last second, cutting the wheel, you know, oh crap. Uh So the guy that put me in the wall, he offered, he came in and offered me to get in his car and they, uh, my team switched transponders. That's why that uh, tech guy threw kind of a big deal about it. Do you want to change the transponder? If we need to, I'm at. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, it's my life. We got to hurry up. Come on, come on. We got to hurry up. Come on, come on. Hey, hey, strap. You can 
start the race, but you have to make a whole lap to be able to get your points. And that night we got into the wall before a whole, one whole lap was completed. He said we could go, but it, we, I couldn't get no points. I could, I could get the money wherever I finished. Like, say, if I finished third or fourth, I would have got third or fourth place money, but I wouldn't have gotten no points because I wasn't in my car. That was probably the worst night of the year. Why did you guys switch transponders? I have no idea. We did it. We did it. And that's Jeffrey's transponder on his car. Right, right. So it's wrong. We're just going to black flag him. You need that transponder. Hey, go. Go. Yes. Trying to sort of what was going on here. We know it's on the monitors up here that we've got the. 28 of Shackford out there, but the 21 of Arthur on the track, and we're not sure what's going on here. We're going to try, try to figure this one out, folks. Yeah, Richie was fortunate enough that he came off the track and was wanting us to get in his car and we switched transponders and I guess you weren't allowed to do that. It tore it up pretty good. Said some crazy things that night. Now get the word on the radios. Basically a little bit of shenanigans in the pit area with the transponders being swapped. So look at that one fixed over uh, down in the pit area. I need. Bit of Jesse trying to cut through the field, but it's going to be Riddle making it extra wide. Go triple E on this big hot foot back there behind him. Could be a tough one there for Riddle if he does not hurry up. It's going to be a bumper massage here soon. A little bit of love come behind, a little bit of love come from the side. Riddle continues to be the stopgap. The jam car out there, all the leaders that try to work their way through. Riddle races hard. I don't block. I've been doing this for a long time. I know where I need to be at to keep people from trying to get around me. He's not always bad. I don't pull over for my mom. I ain't pulling over for anybody. Definitely irritates most people. I, I guess I understand why some people have had issues with him in the past, but he's, he's made that apparent. Say if you're passing him, for one, it's hard to ever just get beside him because he if he's in front of you and you're trying to pass him, he, he kind of uses up the racetrack a lot, so he might, you know, you might say, well, he's running the inside, so I'll go try the outside. And you go to the outside, next thing you know, you're driving in extra hard and rushing way up the track, or you might even hold that line and stay beside him 
and then the next turn you might come down and squeeze on you and squeeze you over the marker tires and then the next turn you're on the outside and you almost got him clear and he drives in there extra hard and nudges you in the door, or hits you in the front wheel, messes you up and holds you back and you get aggravated dealing with it over and over again but uh, he's not always bad, he just, I think in his mind that's just good hard racing because he's not crashing you, he's just racing you hard. Getting impatient back in the pack, Tunny Tunny. Getting a little impatient with the riddle machine. Not sure what they're gonna do, try to break up the riddler here. Solve that joke right away. Giving an inch side by side through the crossover. It's going to be Tony with the advantage. Finally skirts him on past. And this could be the clear shot that it needs for the win. Back to back rookie Fiend on 14 up Quentin White continue to soldier along. Great rookie class here in 2018. I said it before, Riddles, he'll let you know that I, he don't care if he's 10 laps down or if he's on the lead lap, he's going to run you like he's, he's leading the race uh, very hard. Riddle has a lot of years racing. Riddle knows how to keep you behind him. Uh, and, and that's that's what he does. I mean, he's racing just as we all are. We're all, you know, we're all on the track. There's probably a, a handful of guys that are are very hard to to pass, and that's they know what to do. Back up entry, stay on the bottom. That's going to make it harder for you to you know get around them on the outside. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Riddles, riddles, riddle. It's going to be an all-tiny party up in front right now as Hadley buried back in the pack here defending world champion in the three-hour figure endurance race, unable to cut on through. Hadley finally clearing the Riddler, gets on through, set his sights now on the 91 of Sizemore to pick up another lapper. Nine on a blow, takes a stop at the crossroad, bad play for Tim Lowe, look out, contact combat now as a 14 ride of White. Clips in the back end of low. That's a rude awakening. Uh, didn't lap, and I was beside the leader. And Tim was parked in the crossover. I didn't see him. I tried to swerve out of the way. Ended up hitting him. Uh, cut the brakes out, so I ended up stopping up by the wall. painful as far as you know to see other competitor stuff get tore up like that because nine times out of ten uh, it's it's a lot of money to to repair any 
any type of wreck in the crossover. So then the Quentin White takes the long hook ride back in the pit area. He is done for the night. Luckily, health number one, both of them are safe and you know, on to the next one. Uh, I was dragging some material and had some loose parts that they uh, didn't want me to run. Walking wounded out there, Tim Logue. Dropping parts and stopping hearts once again. I was, I was prepared to run, um, was ready to go. Big black flies for Tim Logue out there. Just too much damage to continue on. For safety, they're gonna pull him on off. He was a little hostile. He wanted to talk. Tony in the 12, Ben Tony in the 5, set the final duel. Mark Tony in the 3, Austin Tony in the 7. Come to the closing laps on this one. Two strike, Ben and Jesse take it side by side, but Ben knows it out in front. Trying to put the distance now between them, anything could still happen. Jesse makes a solid shot at it once again. Look down the low side as they go through the north end. Not gonna have that time by, Ben able to soldier on through. All tiny up in front, four times. For the big tee time up there in front. Hadley hanging on to things in the number four car, Sizemore. Still saying, keep it alive in the number 91. <laughs> Closing laps on this one. Ben Tunney got the win, but can he hang on to it? Jesse Tunney tried to stay on to it. The Brasso was still concerned, I think, a little bit close to the X. White flag waving, and one more time around for the five of the Benster. Trying to wrap this one up here with a big win in the same five lapper. See if we make it happen to the crew the last turn. One last time for the crossover now. Jesse out of sight now. One last shot, and it's going to be checkers for Ben Tunney here tonight. I guarantee your grandmother smiling and so is your father. Yeah, that's the whole point of tonight. That's what it's all about. Uh, trying to put on a good race and in front of good people and with good friends. And uh, that's what grandma and grandpa would want. Probably the most important one was be that we've done it as a family. Not just one or two of us, you know, there's uh, four of us racing. <laughs> and tonight, I guarantee he's smiling down right now at you every time you win. That's a. Uh, that's the hope, that's what I hope the most. I miss my dad every day, man. I wish he could be here to see all this success we're having. One, two, three. Let me hear you scream! That's <laughs> been those bands, the upper band. Let's see, 225, 225, 250. Let's see 
what else? 50, another 10, 1,000 bucks, 1,500 dollars worth of damage, just for some guitar. 